majority of households in rural Kenya engage in agriculture for their livelihood and as a source of income, usually in a mixed farming system. Dairy farming is important, especially in Kenya's highlands that have conducive climate for dairy cattle. The dairy subsector in Kenya is dynamic and vibrant. Uh, it is the fastest growing subsector in the, in the agricultural sector and it contributes about 4% of the GDP. Uh, the current milk production indicates uh, that 80% of the milk that is produced uh, is produced by smallholders. The current marketing, milk marketing in Kenya, is that it is uh, largely informal and uh, where 70% of the milk that is produced is marketed informally and about 20% is, is marketed formally and about 10% of milk produced is consumed at a farm level. The dairy subsector uh, provides employment to over 1 million people uh, across the dairy value chain. In recent years, smallholder farming, including dairy farming, has seen increasing commercialization where farming is taken up as a business rather than a livelihood strategy. Over the past 10 years, the sector has also seen a steep growth in the segment of medium and large-scale farmers Many so-called telephone farmers who employ farm managers have ample land and invest heavily in high-breed cows, cow housing and farm machinery. For a long time, many people in Kenya took dairy farming as a social activity. It was not seen as an enterprise that could bring in income and they kept cows because traditionally uh, everyone had to have a cow at home. But as we move along, more and more people are increasingly uh, finding dairy as an enterprise that is both satisfying and bringing in an income that can take care of their families. And this uh, has been brought about by uh, you know, increasing demand for milk. There is a growing middle class where more and more people are drinking milk and therefore there is a market for milk. And then we also have development organizations coming up and seeing this as a way of uh, helping farmers become more food secure but also income secure. What we see is that as this continues to grow, as the demand for milk continues to grow, more and more farmers are going to get into dairy farming and this is a huge opportunity for, for, for income earning for uh, uh, families and for entrepreneurs who really want to start to, to take dairy as a, as, a, as, a, as a source of income. The dairy sector, however, has numerous challenges like high cost price of milk, caused by low skills level of farmhands and farm managers, seasonality of milk production, poor quality of raw milk and other inefficiencies along the collection chain and at the processor level. The Kenya market led dairy program is implemented by SNV Kenya. It is funded uh, by the Netherlands Embassy here in Nairobi. Uh, its phase one was four and a half years and we are uh, going into a phase two from the 1st of January 2017 up to mid 2019. Um, the program uh, works across the value chain with smallholders, medium scale farmers, even large scale farmers because they are all important to, for sector transitioning and sector growth and we work with processors and input suppliers, service providers, but also very important uh, practical training for the dairy industry and institutions that provide this training. In the face of these challenges, the Kenya market-led dairy program, commonly known as KMDP, which is spearheaded by the Netherlands Development Organization, SNV, a not-for-profit organization, recognized that there are great opportunities for farmers, small, medium and large-scale, to take up dairy farming more effectively and efficiently if their skills and knowledge of dairy husbandry are enhanced. KMDP is uh, based on two pillars for interventions. The, the, there is a pillar on the sector issues. So in the sector issues we broadly address uh, issues on fodder and also broadly other aspects that are policy informed. Issues for instance access to seeds. So essentially within the sector uh, intervention we are trying to address all those other factors that cannot be addressed by a small group of farmers by their own. Then the second uh, intervention pillar is about the dairy smallholder value chain. So there we have uh, interventions that work with the farmers who we call smallholder farmers and how they are organized within the dairy value chain where we have the dairy societies and we also have processors and other elements such as transporters and also service providers. KMDP interventions seek for market-based solutions 
that are sustainable and scalable at the dairy farmer level and also at the sector level by addressing systemic issues like commercial food supply, practical training, milk quality and policy issues. Along the smallholder dairy valley chain, KMDP prioritized five key intervention areas to improve efficiency, effectiveness and introduce good practices in dairy farming. This include supporting dairy societies with setting up of farmer training and extension units, training on fodder establishment and preservation, notably maize silage, supporting dairy societies to train graders and transporters to maintain quality of raw milk, training on governance and overall management of dairy societies, and linking farmers and their societies to input and service providers, including practical dairy training centers. This, the program has worked with two milk processors, Happy Cow in Akuru and Mary Union, and 19 dairy societies commonly referred to by KMDP as Milk Collection and Bulking Enterprises, or CBEs, based in Central, Eastern, and the North Rift regions. To start with, training and provision of extension services to entrepreneurial dairy farmers is a critical step towards transforming the smallholder dairy sector and making their farms more profitable. Initially, before the SNV, let me use this example of Mumbares. The, there were no training and extension staff, there were no training committee, there were no fodder, fodder plot, even monitoring to see the quality of the training was not there. So with the intervention of SNV, the Mumberes, they have now employed two staff. They have the extension motorbike for the manager and also for the extension staff. And we have monthly meetings. Through the extension, we have been able to reach a lot of farmers. Through the support of SNV, we have uh, sub gotten uh, enough support uh, from the staff and also from the staff from the SNV part. Whereby we have been meeting our farmers uh, in the farms, we have meet, been meeting our farmers in the demo plots like this today. We have been bringing our farmers. Through the SNV, we have been able, uh, we can say we have increased the productivity of our farmers, basically through that initiative of training them and also bringing even the machineries. They say the activity that we are planning uh, now to bring machineries to the farmers also to assist them in uh, working on the fodder establishment and also uh, uh, planning for the future of our farmers. In terms of training and extension, uh, we were trained at Williams Farm in Eldoret and we have invested, we have, yeah, we have invested, we have bought an air tag applicator plus the air tags themselves. We have we attacked our animals and then the second investment we have bought a chaff cutter of which it's in process now we are making silage through that machine. The use by KMDP of the lead or model farmer approach is instrumental in fast adoption of good practices through peer-to-peer -peer learning by farmers in the dairy society. Where lead farmers have come together to form study groups, there has been remarkable results. The lead farmer approach uh, came in when we, we realized that uh, there is a, a principle we call the Pareto principle, 28 principle, whereby you use 20% uh, of the farmers to produce the 80% of the milk. That is where the, the lead farmer approach came in. And we have realized that uh, we take a, a small group of farmers, 10 lead farmers, we take them into serious training and through this training the farmers are, are, have been able to improve on their farming systems. They have been able to improve on their uh, daily, uh, daily farming skills and the knowledge. This in terms of uh, good record keeping, good calf rearing, uh, silage making, conserving feed for the animals and exchanging ideas between the farmers. Farmers face it, uh, each other in the farm. They see what you are doing, they give you advice, and uh, through the monthly inter interface, it, they, are, they are running from other farmers. This has seen farmers such as Elizabeth increase productivity of her farm. With the exchange of the ideas from farmers from SNV, they have taught us a lot on how to do the breeding of animals. They have taught us on how to build and even use less amount of money and make good animals. So with the other groups of intervisiting, intervisit of the farmers, we have learned a lot because when we exchange ideas with our farmers, you, you go to your place, to your, your farm and try to improve what you have not done from other farmers. We normally say with this project, Road to Success is always under construction. So we have been constructing every time you go to a farmer and we stand there a lot. 
you go implement it to your farm. That's what you are benefiting from. In dairy farming, a well-organized farm involves investment in proper housing, food supply, good animal husbandry practices, and proper record keeping. This is all critical towards making dairy farming a profitable business. Before, I was not keeping my records because I was not knowing anything. But when SNV came in, we started, we, tra we were trained how to keep our uh, production records, how to keep our cup rearing, how to keep a semen record, catalogs, to choose our semen. Then it helps me to, to, get, to get the benefits and I know how to get the benefits of the roads and I ran about, it was very important to know when I am making roads or making mm, benefits. The program is also training farmers on good calf rearing practices and selection of good breeds. Calf rearing is one of the major issues in dairy farming. And uh, we normally say the today's calf is tomorrow's cow. So the mm, better you manage your calf, the better cows you have in the future. But uh, for calf rearing, it starts with the steaming up your dairy cows very well so that you can get a healthy calf. And once the calf is born, you have to take care of the, that calf uh, very well, giving it enough colostrum, giving it uh, clean and uh, fresh water, giving it calf uh, pellets so that you can attain a growth rate of uh, about 700 grams to one, one kilo per day. And once you get that uh, growth rate, you are sure that uh, by 14 months, your calf, you, uh, you are, you are, you are, your calves will have grown to uh, havers and will have attained good weight, uh, what we call the, the breeding weight. And how are farmers benefiting from this training? Previously, I didn't do a recording. Uh, in terms of uh, the feeding, in terms of the gain of the weight of the, of the heifers or, cow or calves, but uh, after I, uh, I got the train from SNV, I started keeping the records, and I've noticed that uh, with the the, the, the the knowledge, I've been able to rear my calves to grow much faster, and that is uh, I'm saying that when the calves are born at uh, uh, with the weight of 40 kilos per day, they have been able to increase by the rate of about two kilos per day and that one at the winning time a calf may have about 350 kilos of weight to 400 some even get to 400 at that time and I'm happy with that so at the time we come to the age of 14 months we serve them. Quality fodder is a key foundation for good milk yields, high productivity and reduced cost price of milk. This has been achieved by training farmers on good fodder management and preservation practices and piloting new fodder varieties. We had in, in almost all high potential areas we had farmers who were entrepreneurial. They had continually improved their breeds and their productions, uh, the, the milk production per day was, uh, was going up but at the same time they, they, were, they were using Napier and dairy milk. So the cost of production was high, mainly because the forage that they were using as a mainstream feed had a low feeding value. Napier grass with a low dry matter level and low energy as compared to maize. So right from 2013 you know, going on, we have been promoting maize silage for such farmers. In as much as it was a bit difficult because of the competition between maize being a, f a human food at the same time being uh, promoted as silage, the uptake has been very good. Maize would have higher levels of energy, would have higher levels of, uh, of, uh, of starch, and certainly higher dry matter than, than Napier. And the uptake has been very good. Also for some areas, it was not just maize alone. It was also with oats uh, for the colder areas, uh, rose grass in some cases, and later on kikuyu grass, which was seen more as a, a protein element in the ration than, than energy. This was very good because we, on the side of proteins, we, had, uh, we, demonstra we, we supported farmers to demonstrate, and what I mean by this is to see whether their soils can support uh, different uh, uh, protein types, Lucerne, Desmodium, Vetch, 
among others. And in some areas, Lusan could not uh, do very well because uh, the soils were, were acidic. But Kikugras would do very well because uh, it would accept such soils and still provide to the, to the farmers the same level, almost the same level or more of crude protein for the ration. Now, the other part was to also inform the cooperatives where the smallholders were taking their milk and where they were getting their services, where those seeds would be found so that when the project is over, they can still access the same seeds that worked in their area. So we did a proper analysis to show this worked, this did not work, and you can get, you can get these seeds from here and this other seed from the other place. Now, and finally, to be able to demonstrate how do we use these fodders now in actual feeding, maize uh, in making silage and showing how silage is now mixed in in the total feed ration for the cow. This growing demand for good fodder has led to establishment of youth groups which have been trained on silage making. They now provide the service at a fee through the so-called service provider enterprise networks commonly known as SPEN groups. SNV took us for a training at Moingu Dairy Farm in Nyeri. We underwent a training there and we were, we were taught on many things on silage making, on general data management. After that, then we came back. Uh, the SNV still took us for some refresher course and some uh, demos to the to various farmers until they confirmed that we were competent enough to assist the other farmers in the society. We normally make silage to our farmers and at a fee that we normally negotiate with our farmers and at a very negotiable fee to ensure that uh, our farmers are comfortable in dairy management. And for information, before SNV came, in our society, we never knew of silage. So through the initiative of SNV, we ran of silage making, and the young people that we formed the group that were trained by SNV, we have managed to have our farmers improve in even in dairy management and dairy production at lunch. Some of these youth have gone a step further and set up their own silage making enterprises. <laughs> silage Last year. He, he training to, to, to Lianza he cast last year. This year, we have found a pair come at Tani, Nyamwacha, and Sapini Nine. It's the longest year in Jana. Back in September, we have found a come at ninety-seven thousand. Why you? We have said we have found a year. Yeah, I'm yeah, I'm more guy. Back in September, we have found a year. We have found a year. We have found a year. Transitioning to silage as a source of feeds has seen farmers comfortably increase milk production volumes even during dry weather periods. Uh, I used to graze my land or rather my cows on open land. I used to rotate the cows between the paddocks for a long time. But I wasn't getting much money or rather much milk from the land. But uh, since SNV came in, they came and trained us. And now we are able to really concentrate on pro high production of hay and also maize silage. From hay, I've been able to get about 3,000 bales per year. And this has really sustained me. But uh, lately, I'm now working hard on, on making silage, maize silage. And right now I have 100 tons of maize silage, which will take me for uh, close to seven months, and for hay that will top up the rest of the year. And I think I'll be more comfortable. I'll, I'll have to sit with the cows and relax. They eat and make money for me.
On the other hand, some dairy cooperatives have also gone into commercial fodder production, selling quality hay to their members at a subsidized rate. Most of the extension services we were offering were on training for farmers. But uh, as an extension department, we saw that there is a, a big fluctuation in the production of milk between rainy seasons and during dry seasons. So as a department we sat down and saw how we can be able to mitigate against these fluctuations. And we saw the best way is for the society to establish its own fodder farms so that it can be harvesting the, the, the fodder, store it, so that it can be able to supply to the farmers during shortages. So we, we, we talked with SNV and uh, they agreed with us. They saw that it's a good idea. We planted the hay, boma roads, and uh, we, we have been able to harvest since our, since we started it, we have been able to harvest 5,030 bales, which we have been able to sell to our farmers at subsidized prices during dry seasons. Uh, the effect of this uh, Ford establishment has been stabilizing milk production. Our farmers have been able to stabilize production uh, previously, uh, our production would fluctuate from 5,000 liters during rainy seasons to uh, even 700 liters when it's dry. But currently, we have stabilized at around 3,000 liters. So at least we can see that this is working. One of the, the topics we learned was uh, silage making. Uh, I, we learned about even the, the, the maize, but specifically I was interested more mainly on the grass. It is readily available in our shampa. So I noted that it is actually the cheapest in terms of uh, to, to, to make. And, uh, and, and I noted that you feed the cows on it, they, 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 they increase the production of milk. Yes, so I, was, I got uh, inspired uh, after that training. Uh, we organize, uh, through the SNV, they organize uh, a kind of demonstration and uh, we came, we prepared, we made some silage out of the cool grass and uh, you only, what you require, we also, also learned that maybe the only thing which you may be a bit, uh, you need, which a bit, uh, you need, which may cost you something small is only the, what we call uh, molasses. But you, it's not a lot when you compare uh, what this silage is going to give you in terms of milk. A key challenge in the dairy industry is poor raw milk quality caused by unhygienic milk handling and inefficient transport. This chain runs from the farm to collection centers, chilling tanks and the milk processing factory. The program has trained farmers on the importance of proper hygiene at the farm level where farmers have to use clean water and clothes on the cow's udder to avoid the risk of infection and milk contamination. They have gone further and even trained transporters and graders on proper milk handling. First of all, let me talk about the issue of quality. Uh, when uh, farmer milk is not rejected, that means an additional income. Now the additional income motivates the farmer. Farmer feel motivated. And if the farmer feel motivated, now it takes this activity as an income generating activity. Uh, we have been able to engage farmers in the extension services, in trainings, ex ex exposure programs, and also on um, fodder management and the finance management in general. Currently, we are working with a group, five groups of about 4,000 um, 5, farmers, but this one is replicated in other, in other farmer based organizations who normally supply milk to us. And with this, first there was this problem of seasonality. Remember, in um, rainy seasons, the production is so high, and in dry seasons, it becomes low. But with the trainings now, which has been uh, done to the farmers and also their readers, in terms of uh, fodder management, essentially that was the problem, fodder management. Because in dry seasons, they don't have fins to feed the, the animals, the production becomes low. We have been able to attain now the increment throughout the, throughout the year. The, the increment is now steady, not previously the way it was half and down. Now that one as a, as a union we are able to, uh, to, uh, to achieve that. 
the training has been very intensive uh, with uh, the support. Actually, we have, we have had five extension officers in the field. Um, these who have been assisted by SNV in terms of setup of the system and also initial trainings for the, those extension officers. And what they have done in the field is tremendous. Because within the, just four or five years ago, in 2011, we were receiving 14,000 liters per day. But as we are talking now, this month of uh, October 2016, we are receiving over 150,000 liters in a day. And this one, you can it to the trainings which has been done in the field and uh, also the motivation of farmers. Uh, when I talk to that, in terms of motivation, we have seen that the quality now is high, no reject. So they are happy on that. Number two, when you have now enough milk in the factory, also cost of production also becomes zero per unit. That means we are able to, to, to pay more price in terms of prices. And I can see that as a union, as the farmers also organization, we are not so much on the profits. So we plow everything back to the, to the owners, owners being the farmers. Like now, we are the highest paying uh, processor in the country. I can confidently say that. And what we do, even what we are paying right now, by the end of the year, we also look at uh, if there is any surplus, we plow it back to the, to the farmers in terms of bonuses, all depending on the milk supplies we have done during the year. So that way the farmer keep, keep, keep on uh, feel motivated, and then that, that effect, they keep on now increasing milk as milk goes. And we expect that uh, by, in the, by the end of 2017, yeah, if the trend continues like that, you will be having over 300,000 liters here a day. These interventions have led to processing firms such as Happy Cow to work with collection bulking enterprises such as Olanguroni and New Gorica CBEs to implement a milk quality tracking and tracing system that will pay farmers and the CBEs based on the quality of raw milk they supply. Initially, uh, milk quality tests were not done at the farmer's level. But these days, <coughs> because we have grouped the farmers into the correction points, they are also attached to certain cans. There are acceptance tests that are done at the farm level. And at the CBE level, after transportation of milk from the farm to the CBE level, there are several other tests that are done uh, on, on top of the acceptance test just to make sure that the, the, the can has qualified now for quality-based milk payment system. So we bag together the milk at the cooling plant and then the milk is collected by the tanker at, uh, to Happy Cow. So we take a composite sample at the cooling plant and also at Happy Cow. So we want to check whether the bulk sample will be a true reflection of the can samples at the cooling plant. So at Happy Cow we are doing four parameters for quality payment and we are doing the total bacterial count we are also doing the antibiotic test we are also doing the lactoscope we are checking on the freezing point and also the the total solids of the milk this is because we want to attach the four parameters to the quality of the can so on every day we are taking several samples say seven to 10 depending on the day uh, we check the cans and these cans are checked twice in a month so for the results that we get for twice in the month we do the average of those tests and then we communicate the information back to the farmers and we are able to do the payment because we have an improved computer software that we are able to know a certain can uh, how it performed and then attach that quality to the farmers so we communicate this information from the quality analysis to the uh, cooperative society then the cooperative society is supposed to make the payments to the respective farmers in the respective cans so at happy cow we are only doing the analysis and then uh, advising which can to be paid premium, which can to be paid penalty, which can to be paid uh, standard, depending on the quality analysis. So the positive thing about all this is the way the reception, the farmers have really picked up this initiative, plus also the transporters, we've seen them really getting interested in it all, and we have seen improved quality at Happy Cow. We can now say that the rejects have reduced 
from the market, the rejects from the market. So we, we are assured that the shelf life, as we have labeled in our products, is going to be okay. KMDP also links farmers to input and service providers involved in supply of quality fodder, seeds, artificial insemination, feed concentrates, minerals and dairy advices. This has been further enhanced through practical training provided in centers such as Lewa Practical Dairy Training Center. We started the, the training center uh, three years ago and the trainings that we provide are based on gaining practical skills for the farmers. So as you have seen there is a um, uh, classroom session that of course is going on. We have to explain our subject first. For that purpose we developed uh, five different modules at the moment that we are doing in a five uh, day session within a week. Uh, in total we have ten modules so we could give another uh, five day training depending on the requests of the farmers. Uh, after that the training uh, continues in the, the practical situation so that can be among the calves, among the cows or in the uh, place where we do the milking uh, but that's basically the idea of our training that we provide to smallholder farmers as well as large-scale farmers is that they see uh, visually what we do, how we do it, how it's being done and so they gain uh, good farm management practices. And how are other input providers benefiting from these farmer engagements? Cooperatives have been of great beneficial to us as coopers uh, in terms of mobilizing farmers and uh, when we they have formed, uh, uh, when they have mobilized farmers we are able to come we give the training to farmers at the same time we make awareness of our products like the dewormers the acaricides the minerals which uh, increase our sales volume as the company and at the same time once we have given out the training to the farmers they extend the information to other farmers which enables us to meet more farmers through the cooperative. Advent of technology has also enabled farmers to keep up with the latest farm recording trends. Chapterate has piloted Uniform Agri Software as an extension tool to help their lead farmers on herd fertility management. Uniform Agri is a herd management software that uh, manages cows by looking at uh, basic data that the farmer enters, like the calving dates, insemination dates, and uh, let's say treatment uh, information. So. From that information you get reports and the same reports are able to help the farmer to manage his cows better and also the extension uh, staff or uh, advisors are able to use the same information to help the farmer. And uh, right now we are trying it in a cooperative level whereby the, it's installed in the cooperative process and the extension officer uh, gets information from the small scale farmers and from the, the, the reports are disseminated to the farmers by the extension people and this information helps the extension people guide the farmers and also formulate their trainings based on the information here because without the data you cannot know what kind of challenges the farmers are, are going through. Uniform Agri Software has uh, helped the farmers a lot first through the, from the CP level we are able to analyze the production per farmer the number of animals per farmer and the feed required as per farmer. Also, we are able to advise the farmer through the uh, by use of records in the in the software. So by using that, we are able to know the production which is expected as per farmer, uh, given that the animal is fed completely at the, at the required level. And also at the farmer level, we are able to advise the farmer to increase the amount of feed to give the animal and also we are able to advise the farmer that that animal should be served yeah, yeah, because the software gives us the expected date of serving or the expected date of drying off. Financial management support is also key. Such interventions have helped cooperatives such as Olenguroni to increase their capacity, improve efficiency and their profitability. Previously the cooperative was experiencing financial difficulties as a result of uh, poor accountability and poor controls in their financial management. We came in and trained the staff together with the KMDP uh, 
KMDP, we came up with internal controls, which included a lot of segregation of duties. As a result, the cooperative now became more profitable in each of their business activities. For example, the Agrovet, which used to record a, a profit of about 40,000 per month, now records a profit of 150,000 per month. As a result, the cooperative now has been able to invest in new projects, like the new construction going on for the Agrovet and the FSA accommodation, the boiler that is now saving a lot on fuel consumption. When these operational costs come down, it definitely results to a better price to the farmers in the long run and at the moment even in the short run. Previously, in the cooperative, we didn't have different policies. And after the training, we were able to have now the policies. And the different policies we have currently are the human resource policy, we have procurement policy, financial policy, and even the board charter. Uh, after these trainings, we are able also to have now uh, to continue having the uh, good governance in the cooperative. And we are able now, because we didn't have enough investments in terms of the extension and others, we are able now to invest more on the trainings to the farmers, whereby we have seen in terms of the silage making and even the investment in terms of the machinery to, to have the, 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 the silage making. And we are able now to see that from the production. We used to have about 6,000 average per day, per day, but currently we are having about 12,000 liters per day. And that has really helped us in terms of the training and running uh, the cooperatives in terms of governance, which has uh, given us a clear way because the board are making the policies and we are implementing the policies and it has really effectively uh, improved the cooperative uh, in this year. They have also enabled the dairy societies to enhance efficiency of service delivery. CBAs provide inputs like feeds, seeds, farm implements and veterinary drugs and also credit facilities. Farmers can purchase these inputs through a check-off system where they buy on credit and pay back through milk deliveries. In some cases, even school fees are prefinanced through this system. This helps tremendously in creating loyalty between farmers and their dairy societies. Before I joined the cooperative, it was hard for me. I didn't have money, but through the cooperative society, I was able to assess the farm input for my, uh, for my cows and I was able to pay school fees for my children. KMDP's work in the smallholder dairy value chain has been successful because of addressing these key issues. This has been made possible by the growing interest of these farmers, including women and youth, who now want to engage in dairy farming as a business instead of a livelihood strategy. Despite the limited size of their land, opportunities to mechanize and to benefit from economies of scale put a cap on the growth of the smallholder milk supply chain. There is significant scope for increased productivity and profitability. In supporting the smallholder supply chain, KMDP's work has contributed to the five themes of SNV's agribusiness approach, which include food security, food safety, climate smart agriculture, inclusive business, and women and youth. And what do farmers make of SNV's interventions through the KMDP project? SNV As the dairy sector shapes up to the growing opportunities and on the back of a growing population and middle class, which is increasingly demanding quality, the Kenya market-led dairy program will continue to support this sector with the utmost business acumen and efficiency that it deserves. For more information about this project, visit our website www.snv.org or www.kaosoko.com forward slash KMDP.